And I've never heard Roger come close to saying anything like this. And people are calling him radical. Well, this is what Patrick Henry said. It is in vain, sir, to extenuate the matter. Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there's no peace. The war has actually begun. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I do not know what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or death. Now, that is pretty radical. But that was a founding father of our nation. That was a man that really steered a lot of in the Constitution and the framing of it. He was one that was rather hesitant to have the Constitution. He, uh, Virginia, he helped form that Constitution there. And that speech that he gave, I mean, that was just a fraction of the whole speech, which is amazing. But um, that speech that he made there made the Congress, well, the representatives at the time, say, yes, let's fight for our liberty. And we're not saying call up to arms, but fight for your liberty in the means that we have. And and peaceful means first. I mean, that's the whole point of what you just said, Dave. Yeah, you can't. The, one of the... Uh Ideas is that is that you can the, the state is an entity of force right inherently uh, even George Washington said that he said that the government is is force it is not reason um, so to try and change something by becoming it doesn't doesn't actually change anything right exactly nice. and so so if you want and, and this is uh, there's a guy Butler Schaefer who has this this excellent book Boundaries of Order and he says that the world uh, the world is is holographic and what he means by that is if you cut a hologram up um, every piece that you cut off of, of the uh, holographic uh, image that you project the laser through, every piece is a smaller version of the original, right? And society is the same way, only it's from the bottom up. We are, we are the core unit of society, and what we see around us is a reflection of, of the overall society. So if we want to live in a peaceful world, we have to be peaceful, right? You can't have you can't have a peaceful society with but made up of violent individuals. It's a it's a con- contradiction. We see that a lot, or hear that a lot. People calling your show during the week, Steve, yeah. um, where people want to good-meaning people who I think are for liberty and freedoms, but they want to force other folks to think their way because they have it down right. They have the correct religion and. They want to force people to be free according to their freedom. Well, when you do that, you place yourself in the same category as the people that you're complaining about. You become the tyrant. Why replace one tyrant from another for another tyrant? Four five eight talk is the number, gentlemen. We have all four lines on hold. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Randy. Randy, what's on your mind? I was tr- intrigued, Steve, by a statement you just made uh, before the break. You said, uh, "Do you want to?" Put yourself in a box by attaching a party label to you or something to that effect. And my feeling is that both parties, the, the both main parties, the Democrat and the Republican, are, are very broad, and that anybody, for instance, on the Democratic Party, whether they're, whether or not they're a good kind of conservative sort of guy, could be in a Democrat Party, or all the way to a progressive or a communist. You know, anybody can be in the party. Now, the Democrat Party has a platform that a person could read with a fine-tooth comb, but even that platform uh, doesn't bind anybody. You know, uh, you could be in that party and not agree with everything in the platform. And then the same thing on the Republican Party. You know, you can have a Ron Paul, real super libertarian, pro-constitutional guy, or you can have an Arlen Specter in the Republican Party. You know, it has the full gamut. So I don't think it pins anyone into a box. Now, I personally am a Republican, but I'm not pinned down by the platform or by anything else. And so there's room in there. All I see the parties as being is just directions. A little bit to the right is the Republicans, you know, a little bit toward freedom, and a little bit toward the left is the Democrats. And so uh, everything can be accomplished there. Well, I, I've, I've heard that repeated, oh, so many times, Randy, by virtually everybody in politics and the mainstream media all would like us to believe that those are our two choices. You, you either choose the Republican, lean to the right, or the Democrat lean to the left. I don't have a problem with someone wanting to be, oh, sorry, you mean, be in a political party if they want to do that. That's their liberty to do so. But 
the Republican Party, we have to face the facts. They're not. They don't lean towards a little more freedom. They gave us the Patriot Act. Yep. They gave us GATT. They gave us NAFTA. We can go down the line. They gave us the TSA. They gave us wars. Medicare Part D, which is 25 times bigger than Obamacare already. Mitt Romney, who's the front runner for the Republican Party, he gave us the first, well, I don't know if it was the first, socialized medicine in his state. He's now calling. Yesterday I saw that he says that global warming is man-made. And man needs to do something about it. And guess what? If he becomes president, he will do something about it. He will take away your liberties to save the planet from overheating. The Republican Party, they have come from, I guess, the Goldwater days when he, there was freedom or when people talked liberty. But the Republican Party is basically the fascist wing of where we see the political spectrum. They are for power just as much as the leftists are for yeah, power. They're, they're, the, they're fascism and maybe the Democrats are, are communism and both of those are variants on socialism. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, so the, that's the thing that kills but me is that when everybody says, well, you're a right wingist. You yeah. must be a, a fascist. No, excuse me. Fascism and socialism are the same thing. They're the same thing. I prefer, uh, I'm sorry. Well, well to, to Randy's point, you know, just because you're in the party doesn't mean you're, you're – um, a liar and a sellout and duplicitous. Um, if you get elected, you are, certainly. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's one of the things that the party system does, Republican or Democrat, is it operates like the, the crab in the crab pot analogy, right? If you put one, or if, if you put one crab in a bucket, um, they'll, they'll climb out, they'll throw their claw over the edge, and they'll pull themselves out. If you throw two in there, as soon as one of them throws their claw over the edge, the one that's in there will pull it back in, right? And ideologically, that's what the Republican and Democrat Party do. If you join this party that has, you know, some monolithic ideology that you may or may not completely agree with, and when you realize that it's all just a giant hoax, right? No, nobody follows the party platform or anything like that. And you say, you know, wait a minute, why why is there no consistent ideology here? And on the left, you know, the the anti-war lefties have found out what Obama's about, and the um, and the anti socialist righties have found out what, what uh, Bush is about at this point. I hope they have. And and they're surprised by that. And so when they try and escape that mechanism or point out the, um, the the false choice that they have, everybody else in the party goes, no, 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 be quiet. We have to win the next election. Don't don't trash on our own people, right? Great example uh, Reagan. is Ron Paul. Uh, right, right. Yeah, Ron Paul gets totally ostracized for s speaking the truth. You know, his, in his book, The Revolution, uh, he said, truth is treason in the empire of lies. And um, and that's how he got treated for a very long time. And no one ever comes against his ideas. They just say, oh, he's the kook. But no one ever challenges what he says because he can't because he reads it right out of the page. And that's and that's the classic way to, to criticize somebody. Why go after their ideas when you can have an ad hominem attack and make the person discredit the person or discredit his ideas by discrediting the person? Correct. Yeah. Right. Hey, we've got uh, three more lines still on hold. Four, five, eight. Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? You still this is Steve. Hey, Steve. What's on your mind? Hey, I just want to know if the boys have heard of geopolitics. Yes. Yeah. You You're talking about like Zbigniew Brzezinski and his plan for the the world and whatnot. Like specifically, uh, what what about it? Uh, it was used during World War II by the Germans on. Uh, resources. It was a study on resources and manpower. Right. It's, yeah, still being used uh, to this day. Right. Yep. Yeah. Well, I see the same issue here in America as the environmentalists, which do absolutely the opposite. They tie up all of our natural resources, and they put all of our manpower out of work. Absolutely. You know, I want to throw out something for all the all the conservatives out there, um, you know, or liberals. It, it doesn't really matter, but mostly the conservatives. So in Australia and Canada right now, there is massive resource extraction happening. Um, mining and, and oil production is just booming like nobody's business. Um, unemployment in Australia is below 3%, and here it's, you know, 10% or whatever. So these are, we you know, in the States, we always go, oh, you know, the Canadians have socialized medicine, and the Australians are socialist too, blah, blah, blah. And yet they have real productive jobs extracting resources from the ground. Uh, so as far as, you know, environmentalist, socialist hippies, right, these people are actually producing wealth by extracting natural resources. 
and we never look in the mirror and go, oh, you know, in our free uh, our free country that doesn't have this cult of environmentalism, um, what do we do here? We tie up resources. It takes more than a decade to bring a mine online in, in Alaska. The permitting process discourages development. Uh, and that's true in the rest of the states, too. And our, our state constitution socializes ownership of, of resources, right? It gives the state ownership of all these oil lands instead of auctioning them off to private people. So before we point the finger at other p parts of the world, which are far less socialized in reality and actually developing productive resources, um, you know, it'd be worthwhile to look in the mirror here. What are we doing here? That takes us to our next break. 458-TALK is the number if you'd like to call in and get in hold. Our other main sponsor of this program, of course, is Bighorn Enterprises, and we just happen to have uh, one of the proprietors of said business here in the studio. Josh, now, we, we've talked a little bit in the past about, you know, for all of your trucking and construction needs, people should call Bighorn Enterprises. The number, of course, 451... Excuse me. Did I say that right? Yeah. 451-7310. Okay. I had to kind of fly out of my head there for a second. What is what is the main thing you want people to understand about your business? Ah, <laughs> uh, main thing besides the fact that we do construction work and uh, all freight of North Slope and various places around the state is uh, we're a very uh, the two owners are very liberty minded. I would say that most of our employees. Follow that also. In fact, I better all be listening. I'm going to question them all when we get <laughs> off of here and go back to work and give them little quizzes like when I used to go to church and dad would say, uh, or when I went to church with my parents and dad would say, so what did the preacher say today? And so, <laughs> well, um, let, let me ask you this. I, you, you mentioned uh, earlier about the idea of honoring contracts. I mean, as a business, if you don't honor your contract, what happens? You lose it, you go to jail, you get sued, you get fined. Right, but but I mean you, you you see this all around you. I mean there there are lots and lots of businesses out there today that you really have to question whether or not they're going to honor their contract before they even get started. And you guys have a reputation of going beyond your contract. Well, we take a contract a little bit more seriously than just a monetary value. We basically the old adage of doing to others you'd have them do to you you do the right thing no matter what it is even if you get a job and you might end up finding out later that you're going to lose money on it you still complete your job you do right by the person that you are contracted by all right and once again that number is 451-7310 if folks have uh, some construction work they need done or uh, if a big company you need to haul something someplace and you want to Pick up and haul the borough building, say. Uh, that wouldn't be a very far haul either because the river is only about <laughs> 50 yards away. 